Here is a 1952 pan head I've been working on. We just uh, sent the tins out to paint. I got uh, a decent amount of work to do on this still before the paint gets back, so should be back in about two weeks. But 52 bottom end, shovel head top end, and I was reading, you know, a lot of the comments and really I try to do all the videos faster now because I have a short attention span and I can't watch videos longer than that. But I get it, when I do that you lose all the um, knowledge that you gain from it. So on this one I'll go real slow, we'll go through the whole video. It's probably going to be 30 minutes long or so by the time I chop it up. Um, then over here we've got our new top end kit. And some of you guys might hate on it. It's a V-Twin kit, but I've ran them in the past and they're actually pretty nice. So the biggest thing to check when you get these kits is they don't hone their cylinders very good. So make sure you get a, you know, somebody who knows what's up and have them check it. Um, and then the heads are all nice. Just come through, lube everything, relock tight it all. The casting's way better than the original ones, but yeah, so we'll uh, step into it and start swapping this over. First thing I'm going to do is make some more room for myself so I can work in here. Uh, I'm going to pull the intake manifold clamps off. You can see these are the two screw kinds. So there's uh, two screws on each clamp and they'll pop right off. I'll pull the carb off and get a little room to get to the head bolts. So we got the carburetor off, the intake manifold clamps are off, and now we're into the push rods. I'm just opening everything up so I have room. So I use my little bungees, strap them up so they're held tight. And then uh, come down here, there's two nuts. There's a bottom locking nut and then there's a top spinning nut. So we're gonna break the locking nuts loose and then we'll collapse them in and uh, pull all the push rods. You saw me just pull out the pushrod tubes, and if you noticed, I went around to the other side of the bike. So this front intake valve uh, was on the high side of the cam lobe, and I couldn't get the pushrod out. So what I did is pulled the plugs and rotated the engine over slightly. So I mean, you can see how these lift, and dropped it down so I get the pushrod out. Um, so we're making progress. Next up, I'm going to pull these oil lines that were for the shovel head uh, oiling system, and then. Uh, We'll start digging into these the bolts right here. And these ones, I don't know why they did it. They used Allen bolts for the head bolts, which kind of sucks. But um, so there's one, two, three, four, five bolts on each one. And the inside ones in here are the hardest to get to. But I'll start uh, taking the heads off. Here's the head bolts that were in this bike. They're all these Allen ones. And I had no tool at all that would get in here. I didn't bother filming it because it took me a little while. I had to heat up the heads. These things were so seized in here and make a little piece out of tool steel that would fit into the Allen and let me crack them out with a half inch wrench on the other side. But yeah, so we got uh, one more bolt to pull, then we'll uh, pull these things off. Usually uh, they kind of get stuck on the gasket, so a little mallet, a little tap tap, and they'll pop right off. And then uh, we'll do a clean up down here in the bottom before we uh, get ready to pull the barrels.
All right, we're making progress. So now we got the heads off. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wrap these with paper towels real quick. I'm gonna come with air, glow, air, air gun, and I'm gonna blow all the debris off the cases, anything that's gunky on here. And I'll take a little brake cleaner, and blow any other stuff. So when I pull the actual cylinders, uh, I can get as little as possible in there, hopefully nothing. So we'll do a quick clean, uh, and then we'll start cracking the, the bottom four bolts loose. Well, now we got the uh, cylinder base bolts off. Two here, two there, same on the other side. And same thing with these as the heads. We're gonna just give it a little crack with a mallet. So usually these get pretty stuck on there. And we'll pull the cylinders. Now we got our uh, pistons off the bike and you can see there's a C-clip on each side. All you gotta do is pull one and you can hammer it out. You don't have to go all the way. You can see where the uh, wrist pin's still sitting. So we've got our pistons out and uh, now we're into the fun stuff. So I just started looking at everything here and these gaskets are super old first off. They're brittle and they're stuck on there. And they use a weird type of silicone too. So here's a not good thing. So shovel head cylinders drain um, differently. They drain inside the barrels and pan head cylinders drain through this vein into the case. Now the problem that they did is this is the vein for the oil and they completely siliconed it shut. And I don't know what they use, but it's super resistant. So I gotta sit here and scrape that and see if I can get it out. Um, I'm not gonna film much of that. I'll check back in when I get it out because it's gonna take me a long time. And uh, keep moving. It has now been two hours since I started scraping whatever they put in these uh, oil veins. You can see they're pretty clean now. I got a little bit more work to do but the majority is done. They had every one of these um, plugged. What a pain. If you ever do a motor, please don't do that for somebody. But I'm done for tonight. That was, that was too much. It was more than I bargained for. So I'll come back in the morning and uh, get back to work. Back here today. I got a nasty cold last night, so I feel like garbage. But we're gonna try to get this top end done. Uh, I cleaned all the surfaces here, went through and I blew out every oil port. So you got the front cylinder feed, leads into the rear, it comes back down into this hole for the crank, and you got your feed line here and a feed line there for the heads. So we got all that cleaned, we're ready to put gaskets on in the new barrels. I also checked the, uh, the wrist pin, everything feels good here, and the flywheels, it's hard, I've done it in some of my past videos, but if you pull up on them like this, you can feel the crank pin bushing if there's any wear in it. And then your side to side play, this motor's still super tight. So usually you cycle them and you can feel it up and down with your hand. But for now, we're gonna check the uh, piston ring clearance. So now we're over here with cylinders. Um, I've already checked the rings on the front one. Gotta check the rings on the rear, rear cylinder now. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So I got a ring in there already. What you do is you'll put your ring in, take the piston, smack it down, 
that's way too far but usually you want it around an inch out and I'll check both sides of the cylinder too the top and the bottom um, but this will work for showing you so here we go it's a 20 here's an 18 so you can take a feeler gauge and get it right in between the rings and you're looking for a smooth pull with it it's hard to do this and hold the camera but okay see so there's 18 uh, probably let's try this there we go so 17 18 18 thou somewhere right around there on this one um, so we're gonna do the same thing with uh, all the piston rings and then get ready to install the top end all right now that the rings are checked too um, I'm gonna come in and clean everything really good even though these are all brand new I'm gonna sit there and take some uh, acetone and thoroughly clean it all so you want to get all your oil drain holes and your uh, feed lines and everything and just make sure it's all nice and clean same with the pistons and then we'll uh, go over and start putting the pistons on You can see how much gunk was just in brand new pistons or brand new pistons and cylinders. This is just from the cylinder, so but you can see how much garbage is still in there. So make sure you're wiping down. Okay, we're nice and clean here. Everything's uh, ready to install. I'm going to uh, pull these wrist pins out and I'm going to put one of the wrist pin clips in each side of the piston. So when I put it in, they're halfway done already. These ones are kind of a pain to put. I think they uh, sent the spiral ones, but uh, we'll find out in just a second. So yeah, we're gonna put one wrist pin clip in each one and then uh, we'll get the pistons on. So these are the spiral wrist pin clips. I don't know if you can see them real well but they look like a little sprung piece. Usually the easiest way to put these on is just to stretch them out a little bit. If you can get them into like that, more of a worm shape, then they go in easier. All right, so I'm gonna show you why I put one uh, wrist pin clip in. I'm not sure if you can see the groove, but once you have one in already, you can slide the uh, wrist pin in and it leaves you perfect space for your other clip. And then you don't have to put both of them on, on the bike because these ones are uh, kind of a pain. So we'll get the other two clips on and we'll start getting the rings.
Okay, so I've got all the uh, piston rings on now. Uh, we've got the scraper rings, we've got our second beveled ring, and then we've got our top compression ring. I'll show you real quick what a second, the beveled ring always has a dot on it. So you always go dot up. And your ring position when you're doing this is important. If you put them all facing the same direction, you're gonna have problems. Um, I'll let you guys just look up a diagram on how to do these. It's gonna it'd be too hard for me to explain. But, but uh, pretty much you don't want any of them in the same direction. They have to be dispersed right, this thing flows good. So, all right, we got our rings on. We're gonna get the cylinders and I don't use a, uh, I don't use a, a ring compressor tool. I have better luck with my fingers, so I'm gonna get these on and we'll do one at a time. And right now I'm gonna take the chance to thoroughly lube the inside of these cylinders. Do have a nice good coating of oil. And please don't do this with dirty hands. Do it with super clean hands or put some gloves on. Um, so, all right, we'll uh, lube up the cylinders and start getting them on. All right, we've got uh, one cylinder on. What I'm gonna do now, so we have a little more uh, Leeway on this one, I'm gonna crank down the rear cylinder so the piston doesn't move as much. They make these little uh, spacers that uh, goes in the case. That'll You can set the piston head while you're doing this, but I don't have mine right now. So we're doing it freehand. But crank these bolts down, then we'll get the front one on. We now have our cylinders and pistons in. Everything's ready to rock. So before we put the heads on, we're gonna come back over to this table and we're gonna lube these up. I'm gonna pull all these locking nuts off, relock tight them, lube the inside of the rockers and uh, lube the valves. Then we'll put our D-rings on and our lids. And then we'll go over and put the heads on. And we're all just about there.
we uh, pulled the top rockers, lubed everything up. I mean, they do a light lube from the factory, but I don't know, I just would rather double check it when it's V-twin stuff. So they're all lubed. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but these are your intake valve oiler arms. And I took them off. I don't run them on my own personal engines, but on these engine or on these heads, it makes less sense to me. So usually what happens is they have a, a hole drilled in the top of the, the rocker here and it'll drip off and then catch onto it. We're doing the wrong way here. Hold on. So well, you can look at it like this, but so there's supposed to be a hole here, dribbles off, runs down this trail, catches, and then drops onto the um, top of the valve. But these rockers do not come with holes in them, so they're even more useless to run. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Now, um, <clears throat> getting ready to put the heads on, or the rocker box covers. On these, I, I almost always run the corks. I think they're uh, by far superior to the other ones. And I also do a light silicone on the top and bottom of them. The pan heads have a major tendency to leak from the rocker boxes. So, um, just a little extra security. I don't like using silicone, but uh, on pan lids, I, I won't do it without them. So, I'm going to do that, and then we'll get the lids on. Okay, you can see uh, just I do a thin layer right around the whole gasket surface and I'm using a three bond uh, gasket maker for all this. It works uh, pretty well. It's gray and doesn't leave a mess. So once I uh, get the top lids on, I'll do one cleanup, but I'm gonna throw the lids on right now before everything sets up. got our rocker boxes on everything's tight you can see these cork o-rings will squish slightly when you tighten them down I'll show you how to clean that up once they dry um, but for now we've got our intake manifold conversion we need to do this is an early style uh, plumber said if I remember right I think it was 48 to 55 50 yeah I think eh, somewhere right around there so 
these come with set pins in them or little uh yeah pretty much just like a rivet so we're going to drill out the rivets unscrew these and then get ready to put these in I wasn't able to finish the uh, video last week because I ordered the wrong adapters. I got them for 61s, uh, not 74s. So I got the new adapters in today, getting ready to install the uh, these manifolds. And I'll show you what I do. So you use a spanner wrench to crank these in. And the problem is when they're this separated, you can't get the right throw on it when it gets in there with the head. So I'll take them like this and I'll drill extra holes in between uh, so you have more room to, or not more room, but uh, you can grab onto something easier instead of having to get a full quarter turn, which you don't get that often. So, yep, I'm gonna drill the uh, other one out and we'll start putting these in. Finally time to install the heads. So we got our uh, manifolds laid out here. We got all new uh, head bolts, because the old ones were shot. And uh, we're ready to go. So we're gonna put both these on. I'm not gonna do them tight. I just want them barely snug, so we gotta adjust the heads. And uh, you'll see when we get to that. But I'm just gonna get the bolts in loose, then we're gonna adjust them, and then uh, we'll crank them down. So usually these heads have adjustability when you're tightening the head bolts, but these ones did not. There was no uh, wiggle room. Usually you can get them kind of snug and you can shift them a little bit to uh, get the manifold to line up perfect. But these didn't have that, so we're gonna run it how they set. But now you can see these extra holes I drilled in the manifold. So when you're twisting with the spanner wrench here, it'll catch that hole. And then if you get stuck, you have an extra hole to bite on. So instead of waiting for the big gaps, you have uh, intermittent holes. I'm gonna put a dab of silicone on the threads and then uh, we'll start screwing these in. Plumber style manifold is now installed. 
those uh, when you drill those holes they help a lot I'll show you usually when you get, can adjust the head it helps a lot because I don't know if you can see it there's a pretty decent sized gap there between the manifolds and I mean that's gonna split between two but I usually like them smaller than that so when you can twist them you can get them pretty perfect while we're at the home stretch I got the intake manifold in here uh, I don't have the clamps on in the back I just need everything fixed for now because I need to run the exhaust but uh, we're gonna get the push rods in and that's gonna be a wrap on this And that's it. Uh, shovel head is now a pan head. Well, I guess the used to be pan head is now a pan head again. But everything's done. I'm not going to put the carb on. Uh, I don't have it yet. The main purpose of this for me was to get the exhaust on and make all the mounts. But push rods are adjusted. Everything's done. And that's going to be a wrap. You'll see a finished video of this bike pretty soon here. Maybe another month or so. And uh, I'll post something up.